Well, folks, what an exciting weekend it was down in the Bluegrass State. From Tyler Raygram getting his first career win in the Truck Series to a dominant win on Friday night for Cole Custer in the Xfinity Series, to Kurt Busch getting his first win of the season, driving for Chip Ganassi Racing in the, in the one car, just barely beating his younger brother Kyle to the finish line. We got a lot for you tonight, and also we are going to be previewing NASCAR in New Hampshire this weekend, which is going to be fun and exciting, and let's hope the weather doesn't get too, too hot, as of which I'm going to be at the race this weekend. So his name is Chris, my name is Corey, and this is the CNJ Speedway Review. And this is the part we roll into the show, because Ed said, don't do an extended open, we're just going to do it old school, Loki and Jabroni Jones here. Welcome to the CNJ Speedway Review. Corey, introduce everybody. All right. So welcome, everybody, to the CNJ Speedway Review. My name is Corey Huffnagel. Alongside me is our good friend, Chris Burns. And so I got to tell you, Chris, you know, NASCAR is in New England this weekend. Uh, it's sad that you're not going to be there this weekend, unfortunately. Uh, but on the other good note, um, I know the weather is going to be really hot this weekend. And I know for me, I have to really prepare myself to stay hydrated this weekend. I mean, temperatures are going from like 99 to 100. So I got to tell you, this is probably going to be the first time I've ever gone to a race where it is going to be so humid out and so hot. I don't know what else to bear. Well, put on your big boy pants, kid, because it's not the first time ever. You're only half right. I will be in New Hampshire this weekend. I yeah. just won't be at the races. So if any of you race fans watch the show, um, family and I are going to be taking a vacation in Weir's Beach and having a great time running the boardwalk because when we booked this trip, it was when should we go? Well, race weekend is the perfect time from 8 right. in the morning, sometimes earlier, till 6 at night. Everybody's at the racetrack. And mm -hmm. I stayed in Weir's Beach. I know, I know how it goes. Sometimes we skip the truck race or skip the Xfinity race. We have the town to ourselves. And on Sunday afternoon, we leave. We're going to go up to a, a place called Clark's and uh, have a good time there. But, man, you have that town to yourself, all the great all the great food, right. the beaches, the arcades, everything. So we're going to be in Weir's Beach. You're going to be at the track on Saturday taking yes. a modified in Xfinity. But, yes. guys, if you've never had a chance to go to the Magic Mile up there in Loudoun, New Hampshire, make it a point to try it sometime. Someday, I would like to get this young lady to go – to New Hampshire. This is little Martin Truex fan right here, Emma Burns. I told you one time I would bring her on. She cannot hear you, so anything you say to her, I'll have to relay. Emma, say hi to the nice folks. Hi. And how what's up? A while. A while. How about a couple like, years? All your life. Mm -hmm. And your favorite driver is Martin Truex Jr. Martin Truex Jr. And do you remember the first time you saw Martin Truex Jr.? No. It was the Napa Know How commercial, and you fell in love. I think you might still yep. have the old number 56 shirt. Mm -hmm. So When he was my friend you, WR in the day. That's correct. And someday when you <laughs> learn to talk, you'll be able to come tell these people more about your favorite driver, the number 19 Toyota of Martin Truex Jr. Say goodbye to Corey and the nice folks. Bye. All right. Go ahead and Bye. sit down. I wanted to give her her just desserts because, you know, the other Martin Truex Jr. fan seems to pop in from time to time. Not that we have a problem with tzatziki sauce, but, you know, let's give equal camera time to another beautiful young lady. Right. But now, let's talk about Kentucky. That truck race, like you said, Tyler Ankrum, uh, wow, did not see that coming. I don't think anybody saw that coming. I really thought Friesen would have something for him in the late laps, but wasn't to be, man. Uh Seems like you watched the race. What'd you take out of it? I thought it was a really good race. Um, I know, like at the closing laps, there were some guys that were taking on some some different pit strategies at the end. And of course, you know, we saw Brett Moffitt, who almost, you know, was going to win the race until he ran out of gas with two laps to go. And yeah, that didn't help. And, no, it, it didn't help at all. And uh, and and from what my understanding was, actually from from what I didn't know, you know, when Tyler Ingram won the race, saw. Uh, Thursday night, he was already he's already locked into the playoffs, and I thought to myself, well, how, how many races has he ran this year? Well, he's only ran about, I want to say, 10 races this season because uh, I know he missed a few races. Actually, he missed, like, I think the first – I want to say he missed the first three races this year because, unfortunately, he wasn't old enough. So, apparently, this was the whole 
we, we're tr- we're starting to see the whole like Todd Gillen phrase, like you know, last year when he wasn't old enough, and then he ran the remaining part of the season, which of course you know didn't win a race, didn't make the playoffs, you know, but had a decent season. But you just look at uh, Ankrum's finishes, you know, he finished nineteenth at Martinsville, and his only worst finish has been pretty much thirty first at Iowa. But if you look at it, he only has like a few top tens. I mean, his his best finish before that was third at uh, Texas, but I got to tell you, you know, now that this guy, now that this team is locked into the playoffs uh, this year, I don't know. I I think you know they're I think they're going to be a one to watch, but I just don't know, you know, how far they're going to go. I'm I'm probably going to say, Ankrum Ankrum's going to go to like the the championship six or something, or maybe like the round of six. I don't know if he can make the championship four. I mean, that's going to be a tough one on them, but. Um, if, if even if they go the championship four, I would be surprised. But but uh, a really good run for this team and a good run for that kid. I mean, I, I expect a lot of good wins, uh, a lot more wins out of this team. No, absolutely. And when you think about it, there's a lot more tracks coming down the pike when we go into the playoffs that are mile and a half, so like Kentucky, where Tyler Ankrum can pick, can pick up another win. Is he going to have the same luck? Is he going to still have like reigning and defending champion Brett Moffitt run out of gas toward the end? No. Is he going to have, you know, Stuart Friesen put, getting that push but not quite the push enough to take over the lead? No. Tyler Ankrum is going to have to work and work hard. And having said that, I don't think he's going to have that much of a problem. The truck series puts eight drivers into the playoffs. Yeah. I think you'll see him easily make the round of six. What he does after that is anybody's business, but we won't know until we get there. And just remember – um, so it's only it's only three races left until the Truck Series playoffs. You know, we got Pocono coming up next week. We got the dirt track at Eldora, which I think that's going to be the wild card, you know, to make it into the playoffs. You know, whoever wins that, you know, it's anybody's ball game. And then, of course, we got Michigan, which I think that's also going to be another wild card because if you look at it, you know, Michigan's the two-mile track. And, of course, we've seen a lot of three-wide racing, a lot of, you know, passes for the lead. And not to mention last year, we had that pass for the win by Brett Moffitt himself. But uh, I have a feeling, I think these last three races of the Truck Series regular season, it's going to be very interesting because you kind of look at Pocono. I mean, yes, the, the stage laps are a lot short. Then you look at the dirt race, of course, you know, there's going to be some guys that know how to run on dirt and then most have been like exper- have been inexperienced on dirt. But then, of course, you go to Michigan. I think that's going to be pretty much the track where everybody's going to have to win no matter how many drivers are already locked into the, the playoffs by wins. But I don't know. I think this is going to be very interesting. It's going to be very interesting who the last five guys, I believe, are going to lock, it, are going to lock in or probably point their way in. There, there, there might be a flaw to your statement, and I'm not picking on you by any means, but every race, everybody has to win. If you want to be a serious contender for the championship, much like I said after Daytona and guys, if you watched last week or listened last week, my apologies, it will never happen again. All that cussing was one time and one time only because Daytona was just that much of a monkey (laughs) show that I had to just let it all out. Corey heard the brunt of it on the phone that day, but boy, mm, that's, that's the last time you're going to hear those words, those select words on this show. Having said right. that, every every race is a must win. If you if you're out there for any other reason than to win a championship in your particular profession, whether it's baseball, hockey, racing, I'll go so far as to say tennis, checkers, they have cornhole championships for crying out loud on ESPN. If you're out there to do anything but win, you're in the wrong profession. Get out. So right. these guys have a competitive spirit that drives them no pun intended to be the best in their field Ankerum wins this weekend he is now officially 1000 percent locked into the playoffs we have five spots left with three races left to go so we're going to have potentially if we count that down six if we have three different winners coming up we'll have six guys locked in on wins and two that get in on points if yeah. you're if you're sheldon creed if you're brennan Poole. If you're a lot of these guys, that win is important. And many of these drivers, and I'll throw, I don't know if she's eligible, but Natalie Decker into that field. If you're someone who wants to run for this championship, get your butt to the front of the field, cross that finish line first, raise the trophy, spray the beer, or in Natalie Decker's case, on I think she's under 21, spray the soda and Gatorade, have a good time. But it's always a must-win situation. 
I'll, I'll follow you on the point about Eldora. Because it's a dirt track, I think that's the biggest wild card. Michigan, yeah. not so much. Yes, the speeds are higher, but those trucks will be engineered to have more downforce so they're not sliding all over the track and we'll have good, clean racing. Unless somebody screws it up for everybody, that's going to be a good, clean race. Eldora is going to be your wild card. Whoever wins that race certainly is going to earn it. But Michigan, I'm going to call for the trucks. I'm going to put Michigan up there like a, like we do with the Xfinity and the Cup. Michigan is going to be the Truck Series Talladega or the Truck Series Daytona. That's going to be where the biggest wild card is because somebody's going to get antsy. Someone's going to get out of line. Someone's going to cause a 12-car pileup. And it's just if you're lucky enough to miss it, you're going to be sitting in the catbird seat come the final lap. Right. All right. So why don't you run down the finishing order? We'll get the picks out of the way, and we'll move on to the Xfinity Series from Kentucky. All right. So uh, Tyler Ingram ends up winning the race tonight, or actually Thursday night, I should say. Um, Stuart Friesen ends up finishing in second, Harrison Burton in third, uh, Ross Chastain in fourth, and then Dylan Lupton rounds out your top five. Uh, Austin Wayne Sell finishes in sixth, Brett Moffitt in seventh, Spencer Davis in eighth, uh, Jeb Burton in ninth, and Johnny Sauter rounds out the top ten. Then you have Tyler Hill in 11th. You have Tyler Dipple in 12th. Matt Crafton in 13th. Brendan Poole in 15th. Uh, Todd Gilliland in 17th. Ben Rhodes in 19th. Uh, Sheldon Creed in 21st. Brandon Jones in 23rd. Brandon Finger in 24th. And then Natalie Decker in 27th. And Austin Hill in 31st. And Joe Nemechek in 32nd. No mention of Jeff Green. I guess he didn't run that particular race. No worries. We'll get to him. He's coming. Don't you guys worry. We have a lot of love for Jeff Green. <laughs> and of course, nobody's favorite, BJ McLeod. But let's go to the picks. We'll start with our guest last week, Joey Ternullo. Fantastic run he had in the Teddy Christopher Classic. He made it to that top 13, but he didn't win. So I want to tip my cap real quick to Joey. Joey, if you're watching, man, we love you. Thank you so much for joining us last week, and you are always welcome whenever you like. So Joey took Brennan Poole as his lock. He finished 15th. He took Matt Crafton as his sleeper. He finished 13th with a finish of 28. You divide that by two. Joey, your finish this week on the truck series was a 14. I took Brett Moffat as my lock. He finished 7th. I took Sheldon. Do not call me Apollo Creed as my sleeper. He finished 21st. That makes my finish a 28. My finish was also a 14. Moving right along, here comes Stat Boy who picked Ross <laughs> Chastain as his lock. He finished fourth. And then he picked Stuart Freeston as his sleeper. He finished second for a total of six. Corey, your finish this week. For the one point on the truck series, your finish was a three. Congratulations, sir. Awesome job. Thank you. That was that pick set, I have to tell you, in watching the greatest hits highlights of that race, couldn't have been better. Nobody would have picked Tyler Anker, and let's start there. And I don't want to pick on Tyler Ankrum. I'm sure he's going to be in our pick set going forward. But nobody saw Tyler Ankrum coming. This could have easily been you finishing 1-3 for a total of 4 and a dead finish of 2. Fantastic. Good job by you. Thank you. So the Xfinity Series ran on Friday night. And like you said, domination one more time. Domination Nation, thy name is Cole Custer. And wow. Just wow. I actually got to watch the Xfinity race, um, the Eternal Flame and the Goddess of Love and the stepdaughter or the not daughter, as she likes to be called, were away on a uh, beachfront cottage vacation. And I got to watch some Xfinity racing, got to watch a lot of things that I don't usually watch, like WWE Network, which you can get at LokiandJabroni.com forward slash wrestling right now. If you buy it now, SummerSlam is free, cheap plug, and then go to anchor.fm and leave the CNJ Speedway review, a five-star review. Having said that, wow, Custer came to play that night, stealing a page out of WWE, The Miz. Custer came to play, and boy, when it was over, he just killed it all. I would just say this, you know, Cole Custer's just, you know, I'm going to say this, you know, I think he's going to be the favorite to win the championship this year, and I just look at it, you know, at the start of the year, you know, my mindset was pretty much on Christopher Bell, and then once 
you know, Custer started winning like five races this season. I thought, well, wait a minute. I don't think this is going to be all uh, Christopher Bell's championship. You know, I think this is going to come down to double zero also. But if you look at it, you know, the big three, they ended up finishing one, two, three. You know, you had Bell finishing second and, of course, Tyler Reddick in third. But it's like I said, you know, I think these are going to be the three guys to watch for. And, you know, if, you, if you're if you going to beat the big three, you're just going to have to outbeat them. But, you know, on the other hand, you know, uh, I thought it was a good race on Friday. And and I would probably say I think the double zero is going to be the one to watch when we go to the next mile and a half racetracks that are coming up. Absolutely, and um, yeah. we mentioned early in the season, yes, it's uh, the Christopher Bell world. Custer sneaks in. You always have to keep the incumbent champion, Tyler Reddick, in your sights, much like on the Cup Series. When it comes down to the championship for this year and when the playoffs start, we make our blind pick on who we think the championship for is going to be. Logano, by default, is going to be in my picks. Why? He's the reigning and defending champion. You can't count him out. So now with Tyler Reddick, I have to look at Tyler Reddick and say, not the odds-on favorite, but he's the second favorite. Custer and Bell are going to be fighting for that number one, and right now Custer has the advantage with five wins. You can't, you can't argue that. No one can. I'm sure you won't because you're the stat guy. You're going to tell me, well, Custer right now has X amount of points, and he's got five wins, and, and it's all perfectly good. You're absolutely 1,000% correct if you were to say that to me. One name I want everybody to keep in their mind, and I know it's kind of an outside shot, but right now, if I'm picking my championship four, which I, know, I don't know how many races we are away from the end of the Xfinity Series, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out my championship three and then throw in a dark horse. Custer, Bell, Reddick, Gregson. Okay. Really good feeling. That one's that Noah one's Gregson's not too bad. Do something spectacular. Yeah, I, I think Noah, Noah Gregson's going to do something coming down the pike that is going to shock the world, and he's going to end up in that championship four. Yeah. See, for me, I do like I do like Gregson's chances. I mean, he has been running decent this year. Um, I don't know. I mean, I just kind of look at it. You know, whoever the four is going to make it. Um, I think it's going to come down to one of the junior motorsports guys. I think it's either going to be Gregson or, uh, or uh, Allgaier that gets that fourth spot. You know, I thought about Allgaier. He was, he was, he just missed my championship four, but again, things can change, but those top three Custer bell Reddick locked in my opinion, when we go to Homestead Miami speedway in November locked, that's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. Yeah. So, why don't we break down the running order? We'll go to the picks, and then we'll move on to probably the most exciting <laughs> cup race I've seen this year, yeah. Kentucky. Oh, yeah. So, Cole Custer ends up winning the race. You have Christopher Bell in second, Tyler Reddick in third, Michael Annette in fourth, uh, Chase Briscoe rounds out in fifth, Noah Gregson in sixth, uh, Justin Allgaier in seventh, Ryan Truex in eighth, uh, Ryan Sieg in ninth, and then Justin Haley rounds out your top ten. You have Riley Herbs in 11, John Hunter Nemechek in 12th, uh, Jeremy Clements in 13th, Austin Sindrick in 14th, Gray Galding in 15th, Shane Lee in 16th, uh, Brandon Brown in 17th, and then, of course, B.J. McLeod, nobody's favorite, in 20th. And then going all the way Boom. down, <laughs> going all the way down, uh, you have Brandon Jones in 30th, and then uh, Juarjo... Avila Jr. finishes in 38th. Never try that name again. That's like, uh, what was it, Juanma Gonzalez. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, well, let's not do that again. So let's go to the picks. We will start with last week's guest, Joey Ternulo. Guys, for the record, he races. He's out there. He does his thing. But he can't beat us in the picks. Come on. Let, let, let's be honest. Joey doesn't have the stats that we have but we love him anyway. Just picking on you, Joey. Much love. Joey took Austin Cindric as his lock. He finished 14th. He took Tyler Reddick as his sleeper. He finished third. And because we added the special hopeful just for Joey Ternulo, he took Noah Gregson 
S is hopeful he finished six. That's a total of 23. You divide that by three. Joey's finish was a 7.3. Close battle, I told you at the top. Very close battle before we went hot. So now let's go to Corey Huffnagel. Corey took Cole Custer as his lock. Yay, look, he finished first. Yeah, we get mm-hmm. it. You're the stat guy. But hey, that's what we have to do to get this done. He took took Herbst out of nowhere. Sleeper Jones finishes 11th. And he took Noah Gregson as his hopeful. He finished 6th. That's a total of 18 for a finish ahead of Joey Ternulo with a total of 6. I told you this was close, guys. Here it comes. I took Justin Allgaier as my lock. He finished 7th. I took Noah Gregson as my sleeper. He finished 6th. And as my hopeful, I took Christopher Bell. He finished 2nd for a total of 15 divided by 3. My total was 5. I win the 2 points for the Xfinity race. Fantastic battle. All three of us should just clap ourselves, do a little Barry Horowitz, pat ourselves on the back. Wow. This couldn't have been a better pick set if we tried. 1-11-6 for you. 7-6-2 for me. 14-3-6 for Joey. Wow. We did a fantastic job. Nothing from Corey. All right. Fair yeah, enough. we did. I think we did. I think you were going to say uh, we did pretty good. No, absolutely. We we knocked it out of the park. Yeah. We were Barry Bonds without the steroids, bro. Mm-hmm. But having said that, I had the opportunity on Saturday night to sit in my living room with a friend of mine that I have known since kindergarten. Yes, since 1843. Me and this gentleman, or this gentleman and I, his name is Frank Sadowski, brand new follower to the show. Hopefully you're watching, Frank. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, We sat, we had beer, we had pizza, we had really great conversation about life, about racing. Uh, Frank, two years ago when the Loki and Jabroni Show did a fundraiser for Autism Awareness, donated. And when he donated, he won a prize. I Somebody donated $200 and said... For the next month, Chris has to wear Red Sox gear. And I did it. Wore a jersey, and I bought a special hat. And I said, the next person to come in with a $25 donation, we will sign the hat, and we will give it to you. Well, it turns out it was Frank. The hat's been sitting down here in Valhalla Underground Studio for nearly two years. Mm-hmm. Frank came over to the house. We watched racing, and he collected. It's sitting right next on his little mantle gimmick right next to a signed seat cushion by his favorite driver, Ryan Newman, that I got in New Hampshire some years ago. But his favorite guy is Ryan Newman. I have a Ryan Newman signed gimmick. There you go, Frank. And that was, oh, what race did we watch? Bristol Spring Race 2013. So Frank's got more free stuff from me than probably anybody else. Right. Even Shirley, who won the flag. Good job, Shirley. I hear you finally got your flag. Fantastic. But wow, an exciting race, good speed, really poor pitch strategy toward the end of the race. But when it's all said and done, Kurt Busch comes away with the victory. Not the other guy. Kurt Busch battles his brother door to door and takes the victory at Kentucky. Wow. Fantastic race all around. I can't gush enough about it. The speeds were good. All of your usual suspects were great um even mr invisible did well for a while until again bad pitch strategy knocked him back into the 20s you watched the race late you dvr'd it and then you watched it again which is odd or did you watch it live i can't remember yeah i I did i watched it live because uh because i was actually at a uh i was at a family barbecue party in new hampshire and uh it was funny because i remember the race was on at 7 30 so I kind of left a little bit early, so then that ought to way I can get home in time for the race. And yeah, I I, I watched the whole entire. Race and yeah, it was a good finish by Kurt Busch, and I thought his I thought his brother Kyle was going to get him right at turn four, but you know it it was finished all around. And like I said, it was uh it was a good redemption win by Kurt Busch because you know last week, you know he could have won the race at Daytona, and then of course his crew chief said, well, you know the rain's not coming, so we're going to have to come in anyway, but. But what a good turnaround that this team is. And I got a feeling, you know, I think this one car, you know, don't count these guys out. You know, I think when it comes to playoff time, I think they can show us something. Oh, absolutely. Um, Kurt Busch was good all day long. There was a lot of other guys. Uh, Benedetto did well. Newman did well. 
a lot of guys that you didn't expect to be fantastic in Kentucky really raised their game. The one thing I mentioned earlier, and I want to talk about it now, is the late race pitch strategy, where I think the caution came out with 26 to go. And some of the guys that pitted early, like, like Kurt Busch, like a Ryan Newman, like a Joey Logano, they stayed out. And a lot of other guys ducked in. Well, that, that's a big problem because those cars up front had only pitted 20 laps earlier, still had the speed, still had the tires, and there were only six cars on the lead lap at the end of this race. So bad right. pitch strategy. I don't know if they didn't think about it when everybody else came in to get their gas, to get their tires, to make sure they were there at the end. The pit window was only 65 laps. So to go in with 40 to go was a master genius move on the part of the Kurt Bushes, the Joey Logano's, the Ryan Newman's, even though they kind of wiggled back and didn't make it because I think they were the first two on pit lane and they got lapped at the right. last caution, which came at lap 20, uh, 26 to go. I don't remember what lap number it was, but bad move. If you think you've got enough to finish and you're keeping speed and you're in the top 10, stay out. But I'm not a crew chief. I don't, I don't, I don't pretend to know what they do. If I'm playing a video game and I think I got the guts, yeah, I'll stay out with 26 to go. What's the worst that can happen? You turn Jimmy Johnson on the video game and then you move along. Or the other guy, and Emma just reminded me, you mentioned the name Kyle Bush, so I have to hold this little thing up. Hashtag FKB. If you ever go to the CNJ Speedway Review Twitter, leave that hashtag. You'll get an instant follow and like from me. You're welcome. Yeah. So, why don't you go through the run? Wait, 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 wait. What did you take away from this race? I thought this was easily the best race of the year so far. And I have to say, with this new rules package, I mean, I got to tell you, I mean, with all these, uh, with all the mile and a half racetracks that we've been racing on this year, I mean, the first few this season, you know, was okay. Kansas, I thought, was pretty good. Charlotte, I thought, was good too, if you add the All Star race and the Coke 600 as well. Um, Kentucky, I thought this race was pretty good. You know, there was a lot, there was some drafting or there was some pushing, I think, on the restart uh, whatsoever. So, I, you know, I put this new rules package this season, you know, we're, we're seeing a lot of exciting racing. And even the NASCAR executives, you know, even they're really impressed on how this racing is this year. But there's one thing I really want to take away, and that was that was on one restart where William Byron ended up getting penalized for the restart oh, violation. thank you. And everybody thank thought – and everybody thought that, well, Clint Boyer, you know, was playing games on the restart and stuff. This is my take on it. I think either Byron kind of got a little bit excited because he's never let on a restart before, or I mean he's let on initial starts and stuff, or or Boyer kind of played games and all that stuff. So I have a feeling I think NASCAR is probably going to take a look at that, and they're probably going to say, all right, guys, we don't want to play any games on the restart because just remember, of course, you know, you don't beat the leader to the finish line, but however, if the leader doesn't, go past those two lines on the restart zone, then the flagman ends up starting the race anyway. But that was a really disappointing shocker. I mean, I, I even looked at it myself. I mean, I didn't think Byron jumped at all. I mean, I think, you know, Boyer, I think, was expecting him to go. And then, because, if of course, you know, if you have the other guy go and then that guy go, then pretty much, you know, all heck's going to break loose. So, I mean, honestly, I mean, disappointing right. run for Byron, but I really think NASCAR should do a little bit of tweaking on the restarts and whatever. My, my take on this is, and I watched the replay a couple times, and through the magic of modern cable television, you, you can rewind it and go back uh, go back and rewind it and go back and, and check it out all over again. When My understanding of the rule is, you know, in the restart zone, you, you go. And then when you get to the line, the leader has to cross the line first. Every replay I saw had Boyer by inches cross that line. Again, I may be wrong. I I'm not NASCAR. I don't have the telemetry. I don't have the satellite tracking. What I do have is two eyes, four, if you count these little things that I wear on my nose. William Byron didn't cross that line. My opinion is, and the commentators mentioned it, Boyer might have spun his tires on the restart, and then when he got grip, he had, Boyer had a rocket, let's be honest. But when they came across that line, it looked clearly in every replay that I saw that Boyer – his nose crossed that line first. The penalty to Byron, and I believe you might have saw and throw the thumbs up on my Facebook page, Byron didn't deserve that penalty. And if NASCAR really wants to know why 
The ratings are down. I love NASCAR. I'm always going to follow it. I'm always going to support it. But it's because of these ignorant penalties, the uncontrolled tire that sat behind one guy last week in Daytona. Can't remember who got the uncontrolled tire penalty, but it didn't roll out of the box. It didn't cross into anybody else's pit space. It just happened to roll behind the tire carrier. It's right there. It's not uncontrolled. Hello? What are we doing here? Are we just penalizing guys to penalize guys? It's it's all a crapshoot, and it's all up to the watchful eye of NASCAR. And much like uh, Harry Hogg said in the movie, it must not have happened if it didn't happen in the watchful eye of you or NASCAR. So right. I'm just going to defer to NASCAR. I'm, I'm going to say William Byron took his penalty like a man. He shouldn't have. He should have fought it. He was running second at the time. Yeah. That 24 team... They really got hosed this weekend. But unlike Daytona, where everybody got hosed, from the drivers to the fans to Kurt Busch to everybody, this week only William Byron got hosed. And if that's the case, I'll take it. Right. Stop yawning. My, my words are not that boring. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the finishing order of the Kentucky race and the cup. We'll go to the picks, and then we'll move on to the Magic Mile. All right, so you got Kurt Busch who won the race. You have his brother Kyle finishing in second. Um, Eric Jones finishes in third. Kyle Larson in fourth. Uh, Denny Hamlin rounds out your top five. Then Clint Boyer rounds out six. Joey Logano seventh. Uh, Daniel Suarez in eighth. Ryan Newman in ninth. Chris Busch rounds out the top ten. Then, of course, you have Paul Menard in eleventh. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in twelfth. Ryan Blaney in thirteenth. Eric Amarola in fourteenth. Uh, Chase Elliott in 15th, Matt Benedetto in 16th, Alex Bowman in 17th, William Byron in 18th, Martin Jewish Jr. in 19th, and Brad Keselowski rounds out the top 20. Then, of course, you have Ryan Priest, Kevin Harvick, Bubba Wallace, Daniel Hamrick, uh, Michael McDowell, Ty Dillon, Matt Tiff, Cole LaJoy, uh, David Reagan, and Jimmy Johnson rounds out the top 30. And then the last few, you have Ross Chastain, Landon Castle, Bailey Curry, Quinn Hoff, uh, Austin Dillon, and then, of course, B.J. McLeod, nobody's favorite in last. Boo! I do want to point yeah. something out before we go to the picks. Longtime listeners of the show, and maybe Corey even, has noticed I did not ask for a happy or a sad in any of these three races. And there's a reason for this. Because no matter who finished where and whatnot, this was, in my opinion, even for five years, the most exciting weekend of racing that we've seen in a long, long time. Every race was awesome. Every race was meaningful. There was not a lot of controversy. Everything was right. And normally, you know, we'd say, you know, hey, my sad will go to, uh, you know, Brad Keselowski. Yeah, he finished 20th, but so what? And yada, yada. Our picks were great. The races were great. No happies or sads this week. We're happy that we got a fantastic weekend of racing. My curveball, if Corey wants to go back, and <laughs> we can do it, but I'd rather talk about the Magic Mile coming up right after we do the picks. What do you think? Do you have a happy or a sad, or do you just think this was perhaps the best weekend of racing we've seen in a long time? I'd probably say it was the best weekend we saw in racing, so I agree on that. Okay, so we don't necessarily need to do happies and sads. No. Okay. Well, I'm happy, and you guys are sad that we didn't make those picks. But speaking of picks, we're going to start with Joey Ternulo, who took Martin Truex Jr. as his lock. He finished 19th, oddly enough, the 19 car. His sleeper was Joey Logano. He finished 7th. Hometown boy is going to pick the hometown boy. I get it. And he took Eric Almirola as his hopeful. He finished 14th. That's a finish of 40. Divide that by 3. Joey, your finish was a 13.3 moving on to myself i took kyle larson as my lock he finished fourth i took ryan newman as my sleeper frank's favorite he finished ninth and of course i took mr invisible with mr where did he go formerly mr where did he come from the closer who hasn't closed anything but a book lately kevin harvick 22nd my total was 35 you divide that my finish was a 12.3 now on to Mr. Stat Guy himself. You took 
Alex Bowman is your lock. He finished 17th. You took Kevin Harvick as your sleeper. He finished 22nd. And you took Brad Keselowski as your hopeful. He finished 20th for a total of 59. Divide that by three. Your total was a 19.3, giving me the three points and five points on the week. So now we go to the totals. Last week, Corey was up by two with a 52 to 50 victory. I am up this week 55 to 53 with two points as the advantage but once again guys we haven't been more than 13 points away from each other this entire season i'm sorry 14 points that's not a lot nobody's killing each other this is fantastic we are really putting our mind and our muscle into these picks so and especially as close as all of these races were this weekend in our picks i gotta give it to Corey and joey you guys this was great i loved it oh yeah Sooner we can get Joey back, the better. Maybe Jason Blue. Maybe we can have a four-headed monster going into championship weekend and all four of us make picks. I like that. All right. But this weekend, the Magic Mile, Loudon, New Hampshire, one of the most beautiful scenic areas you can go to. The track is beautiful. The facility is great. Everything about this area I love. But we're going to talk about the racing. So, Corey, where are we going to be on Saturday and why? And where can we find it? Well, let's just talk about where I'm going to be on Saturday. I can tell you where I'm going to be on Saturday. <laughs> in the same state, 30 miles away, but having fun with the kiddos and, and the Eternal Flame and the Goddess of Love, of course. And, of course, I'm going to be in the same state watching the race. And then, of course... As we mentioned, you know, the heat wave is coming this weekend, so I'm going to be probably more prepared about this, and hopefully I can stay hydrated and use a lot of sunblock uh, this weekend as well. So hopefully I can come back with a good tan, not a not a really, really bad sunburn, because then that would be very bad and so forth. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. When I looked up the weather uh, this weekend and I saw it was going to be 100 on Saturday, I was like, and I thought last year's weather was perfect, but uh, this year's a whole lot different than what it was last year. And I thought, I don't think I'm more prepared for this hot weather, but it's going to be a challenge. But as long as I sit underneath that race tower with the shade, I should be okay and all that. Here's another thing. Here's another thing that people forget. At the racetrack, yes, it's going to be brutal. Yeah. Um, they're talking about 100-degree heat on Saturday. but and, and you have to add now the – 40 cars that are going around in the extended race, not to mention the modified race. It's going to be earlier. It's going to be yeah. hot as hell. It but is. If you're, if you're like me, who's going to be on Lake Winnipesaukee, you have the breeze from the mountains. You have the cool air coming off the lake. I'm going to be in seventh heaven, bro. Sorry. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm, I'm somewhat jealous that you're going to be at the racetrack. But for yeah. me and, for, as far as me and my family goes, wouldn't have traded it for the world. Well, the difference is, is that the race starts at like 4 o'clock uh, on Saturday, so I think I should be okay. I mean, as long as it's not too hot late in the afternoon, I think it should be all right, but we'll just see how it all goes. I'm going to give you a bit of advice, and I don't, I don't know how much of a drinker you are, but somebody taught me this about 20 years ago. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. I'm so old. Mm. 1999, we went to Darlington, one of my three trips there fantastic it was a hundred plus on labor day and one of the gentlemen i went with said here's how you do it beer beer water beer beer water and i'm like isn't that a lot he goes nah beer's 85 percent water anyway done hello mm. plus you're sweating out most of the beer anyway you don't feel it that's not to say that you should do that i'm just saying if you want a beer 85 percent water hmm Interesting. All right. So where you find the Xfinity race on Saturday? All right. So um, <laughs> anyway, so you got the Xfinity race on Saturday, the Rockstar 200. I think Rockstar is a uh, off-roading company, so they're going to be the sponsor of the race this weekend. So it is. Wait, wait, be wait, 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 wait. Rockstar is an energy drink, which is officially sponsored by our producer emeritus, Mr. Eddie Focus. I think he drinks more Rockstar than he does water, to be honest. Every time I see him in his little Facebook pictures, he's got a Rockstar energy drink in his hand. 
Of course, it could be a trucking company. I don't know. Right. Corey's going to the Google machine right now, it looks like. Well, apparently, um, so basically, Rockstar, this is how you spell it. It's it's uh, R-O-X-O-R. So pretty oh, much Rockstar. there. Yeah, yeah Rockstar. I, I could even. <laughs> enunciation is key, my friend. Yes. Very big enunciation. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so you have the Rockstar uh, 200 on NBCSN, 4 o'clock Eastern time. And then, of course, you can stream it live on the NBC Sports app. And then, of course, if you have Sirius XM Satellite Radio, Channel 90, um, you have the PR and the Performance Racing Network uh, this weekend. The former home of Rusty Wallace. Is this supposed to be the former home? <laughs> well, I'm going to have to make a new gimmick sign for this now because mine just says PR and the Performance Racing Network, and I would add home of Rusty Wallace, but now that he's moved to MRN, I got to get a new little uh, paper square. Right. This is not working. Although, I no. have to give Emma a lot of credit. When you see the hashtag FKB, she did the black outline in Sharpie around this, so props to her. Yeah, that is she, that that came out really good, too. She's artistic. Yeah. Artistic. Just remember I said that. Oh, yeah. Artistic. Moving right along. Who, who's our suspect in this race? Okay, so um, so there's only going to be one cup guy in the field this weekend, and that is going to and that is going to be Paul Menard, who is going to drive the second uh, Team Penske car this weekend, driving the 12 Menards uh, Richmond Ford. And then other than that, you have guys like Cole Custer, you have Stephen Light, Michael Annette, Tyler Reddick, uh, nobody's favorite beat, Jim McLeod, um, oh! driving the four car this weekend. So I hope he... Does pretty bad. I don't know. I uh, let's see. You have Ray Black Jr. You have Justin Allgaier. Uh, Ryan Truex is going to be back in the eight car this weekend for Junior Motorsports. Then you have Greg Galding. You have Noah Gregson, Justin Haley, uh, Bailey Curry. You have Harrison Burton in the eighteen car this weekend. You have Brandon Jones, Christopher Bell, Kaz Grawl is going to be in the twenty-one car uh, this weekend. Uh, Massachusetts native which I cannot wait to see yes. him race uh, this weekend. Uh, then you have Austin Sendrick, John Hunter Nemechek, Shane Lee, uh, Joey Gase, uh, CJ McLaughlin. Oh, wow. CJ McLaughlin from uh, Framingham, uh, Framingham, Mass. I didn't I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. Nice. <laughs> then you have Chad Fincham, Jeremy Clements, uh, Dylan Bassett, uh, Brandon Brown, Morgan Shepard, Alex LeBay, uh, Ryan Sieg, and last but not least, Chase Briscoe. All right. I'll lead off the picks for this one. I always talk about momentum, and momentum's important, and nobody has more momentum than Cole Custer, who's going to be my lock this weekend. Not sure. I, I tried to look up some stuff over the last couple days leading up to tonight, and even when we thought we weren't going to do this tonight, still couldn't find anything about Custer's history. And new, but boy, if there's anybody that has more oomph right now, it's Cole Custer. My sleeper is going to be a semi-local guy. I'd love to pick Kaz Grala. I'd love to pick CJ. But I want to take Ryan Truex as my sleeper. If he's anything like his brother, he's figured out this track. He's run there several times. I yeah. think this might be the sleeper of all sleepers this weekend. Well, and let's not forget, uh, Cole Custer did win a truck race at New Hampshire uh, years ago when he was driving for, I forget what team that was, before uh, Junior decided to run a truck series team, I think, for like one year and so forth. But, uh, but yeah, you could add uh, a truck win to uh, Custer's resume at uh, the Magic Mile. But in an Xfinity car, which is built a lot like a cup car, different airflow, different dynamic, different everything. Right. All right, so what do you got for picks this week? Okay, so my lock and my sleeper are going to be one the same and one's going to be different. So, of course, my lock, of course, is going to go to Cole Custer. I mean, there's just no stopping him right now. I mean, even though that Bell won this race last year, I really think, you know, Custer has the edge at this point. So I just I really think that this is going to be the team to beat, you know, moving on through the next couple of races. Uh, my sleeper... Of course, even though we have one cup guy in the field, uh, my sleeper, I'm going to go with Paul Menard. I mean, he finished fourth at Michigan a couple weeks ago, and and I kind of thought to myself, all right, well, 
you know, you're in a Team Penske car, so you're expected to win anyway. But it would be pretty cool, you know, to see Paul Menard get a, get a win in Xfinity because, of course, he hasn't won an Xfinity race, I think, in like the last five years or so. But I think it would be pretty cool uh, if he can get a win. And uh, even though we don't have the biggie, biggie cup guys like Bush and, and of course, Keselowski and Blaney and Logano, I mean, I, I think it would be a really good win for him. You want to see something really cool? What's up? This is me watching you, watching me, watching you. Right here on Emma's phone. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> nice. All right. So on Sunday, we have the Cup guys Yep. at the Magic Mile. Um, first of all, anybody going to that race, have a great time. Try, again, like Corey said, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Yeah. You guys are going to be brutalized at that track. Uh, 9,500 degree heat. Add to that the cars going around. I am actually relieved that I'm not going to this race because just out today doing my job in 100 degree heat here in Connecticut, brutal. But yeah. be it, you, you add 40, 40, 50 degrees with those cars out there in the blazing sun on those aluminum bleachers. Guys, have fun. Stay hydrated. Be safe. Have a great time. But, Corey, tell them where, when, how, and why they can see this race. All right. So, Sunday, which, of course, um, I have a friend of mine that's going to the race on Sunday. And it's funny because I'm going Saturday and he's going Sunday. So, I want to give a little shout-out to my friend CJ. Uh, and, uh, CJ, uh, have fun at the race this weekend. I know I'm going Saturday. So, so it should be a lot of fun. But, anyways. Is, uh, that, is, that, Mr. CJ, is that Mr. CJ Bassett? Am I getting yes. that name right? Correct. CJ, CJ, if you like the show, if you love the show, and I want to take this burden off Corey's shoulders, a size XL Matt DiBenedetto t-shirt would not suck for your favorite second co-host ever yeah. in the history of ever. Thank you. C CJ, if you're at the race on Sunday, buy this man, buy this man a Guido t-shirt, extra large. <laughs> And I'll take care of you. I'll take care yes. of you. Yes. He will take really good care of you. If he... So go on with the particulars. Anyways. <laughs> all right. So Sunday you have the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series, Foxwoods Resort Casino 301. Uh, it is at 3 o'clock Eastern time on NBCSN. And then, of course, you can stream it live on the NBC Sports app. And then, of course, you have the Sirius XS Satellite Radio Channel 90, which, of course, you have the PRN, the Racing Network this weekend. The former home of Rusty Wallace. Correct. Okay. Usual suspects. Do we have any uh, local guys coming in? Uh, let's see. Um, I know the only local guy that's going to be racing is Ryan Priest from Connecticut. So that should be uh, well, he's really good for him. We can't, we can't quite. We can't quite count Ryan Priest. He's a regular. Right. But uh, other so, than that, I don't see any uh, usual suspects, so we're good. But actually, hold on. Uh, we have a guy named – let's see. We have a couple guys from New England. You have Andy Sice from Hampstead, New Hampshire, driving the 51 car this weekend for Pettyware Wear Racing. And then, of course, uh, another guy that's going to be racing, none other than Fort Kent Main Zone, Austin Terrio, who's going to drive the 52 car for Rick Wear Racing uh, this weekend. Okay, I, I remember Terrio being in the uh, races before. Uh, yep. Yeah, okay. So, flip a coin in your head. Do you want to take picks, or do you want me? Because I changed one of my picks from what I texted you earlier. I'll take my picks. You want to go right ahead. Okay. So, my lock for this one, and I know this is pretty much a one-mile track, so I, the only thing is I was kind of doing a lot of thinking about this, and even though – uh, NASCAR only goes to New Hampshire once. So I want to try and flip a little bit of a uh, little bit of a something. So my lock on this one, I'm going to go with the two of Brad Keselowski. And I kind of thought of it, and I said, okay, so he did win at Martinsville, which is a lot different. But, of course, you know, you go to New Hampshire, which is a one-mile racetrack, and I know Brad's won there before. So I really think, you know, I think I really think Brad's going to be that one guy that I kind of expect him to win but I just want to see him have a good run. Now, my sleeper on this one, I'm going to go with Kyle Larson. 
And I look at him, of course, he's finished runner-up there, I think, three times before. And, of course, he finished fourth in Kentucky uh, last weekend as well. So I kind of figured, all right, so if Kurt, you know, it'd be really cool if Ganassi wins back-to-back, you know, Kurt Busch winning on Saturday, and then, of course, Larson possibly winning on Sunday. And not to mention, you know, Larson needs a good run as well. I mean, he hasn't had the best of starts the season, but I really want to see this team do pretty good, and hopefully it can get a win sometime soon. And, of course, my hopeful on this, uh, that uh, my hopeful, I'm going to go with Eric Almarola. I mean, he dominated, I want to say, most of the race last year, and then he had a little bit of faulty pit problems near the end. So I'm really hoping that Almarola can get his first win this season and not to mention, you know, have – uh, actually, not to mention, you know, have Stuart Haas Racing get their first win of the year because, you know, neither one of their four drivers have yet to ring the bell this season. Absolutely. And Almirola almost made my picks this week. But originally, when we weren't going to do the show tonight, I sent you my picks. And I had, if I'm doing my math right, Hamlin as my lock. Yeah. Did a little thinking. Did a little thinking. And I said, you know what? It's New Hampshire. It's... As far as Connecticut's concerned, you have Watkins Glen, 100 and change miles to our west. You have New Hampshire, 100 and change miles to our north. I'm going to pick the local guy. Guys, write this down. I don't often do this. My lock is going to be the number two of 22 of Joey Logano. I've seen him do well at this track before. Hamlin's won there. In fact, the uh, weekend that we met and started this whole crazy business that we call the CNJ Speed Review. Uh, Hamlin was the winner of that race. Yeah, I just have a good I have a good feeling about the champ right now. Logano is going to have a great run. I think he's going to win. My sleeper is someone who's won at New Hampshire before and had a great run last weekend. It's going to be I, I, as my sleeper again. I'm taking Ryan Newman. Something tells me that six is going to find victory lane and ease his way into the playoffs. And of course, if you've been listening to this show the entire season, or at least for the last five weeks, my hopeful is going to be Mr. Invisible, the guy who can't find Victory Lane with a map, the guy whose GPS takes him to Pit Road instead of Victory Lane, Mr. Where the Hell Did He Go? That being the four of Kevin Harvick. Until he wins, he will always be my hopeful because he lets me down week after week. But like you said with Al Marola, Stuart Haas has to find Victory Lane. Doesn't matter who it is. Suarez, Almirola, Harvick, Boyer. Somebody's got to break that glass ceiling and get to victory lane and give them the oomph they need. We are already past the halfway point. Stuart Haas Racing has collected zero victories on the Cup Series. We're now talking about Stuart Haas like we did about Hendrick Motorsports last year. When are they going to break through? When are they going to make it? When are they going to have their shining moment in the sun? Who would have thought after last season, that we'd be saying that about Stuart Haas racing in 2019. Right. It's ridiculous. And to me, I don't, they're competitive. Let's be completely honest. But they're not exactly doing what it takes, or maybe they're having bad luck or whatever. If I have to ask you before we close out, what do you think the problem is with Stuart Haas racing right now in July of 2019? <laughs> I would probably say right now, I think, you know, I'm, I'm going to probably say, you know, they can't get, I, I don't think they can find this rules package, you know, what they've been searching for. But I mean, to go from, let's say like eight wins last season to like, well, I don't know if you had, if you had how many wins, you know, Amarola had, and I think Boyer had, I think to go from, I want to say like 10 11, wins well, overall. 10 wins overall last year to zero wins. I mean, I don't know. Like, I've just been very, like, surprised. And and then not to mention, yeah, Daniel Suarez on the team. You know, I thought it was going to bring some winnings on there too. But I don't know. I mean, I just look at it. You know, they just haven't been running good as what I expected them to be. But honestly, of course, you know, they need to find something. Absolutely. All right. So before we go, I just want to bring in one more time. Little Martin Truex Jr. fan, little Miss Emma, so she can say goodbye to everybody. Bye. You know, you need really Bye. need to learn to speak. You did a fantastic intro four years ago for the Loki Jabroni Show, and you can't talk to these racing folk right now. I can. Well, tell them what you think is going to happen. Make your pick. One pick. Who's going to win this weekend? Martin Truex Jr. Martin Truex Jr. You are good. Thank you very much. 
Corey agrees. He he threw his thumbs up, but I'm sure I definitely Mr. agree. Sauce, Miss Tzatziki Sauce will throw you a thumbs up at some point. But yeah. Corey, this is the time where I usually ask you to pin plug or otherwise push to the people what we're doing. But I just want to throw out this past week on the Loki and Jaberna show. I'm going first. Thank you very much. We just talked about random sports topics and topics in the world, like the Area 51 supposed push mm. by people who either A, think the world is flat or don't believe in guns. We talked about that. We talked about a lot of things in sports. We just had a really good time. It was fun. If you love like our show, go check out the Loki and Jabroni show. You can find it on Anchor FM, just like you find this show, or on Apple Podcasts. And we had a lot of fun. And I hope, Corey, you have a lot of fun this Saturday, not only at the Modified Race, but the Xfinity Race. But this is the time where I say to you, pimp, plug, or otherwise push upon the people what you need to do. Okay, so uh, keep following us on the CNJ Speed Review. Uh, we are on Facebook. Make sure you guys search us up. Click the like button. Uh, YouTube, uh, subscribe, hit the bell. You'll get notifications on when we go live and when we upload everything else and so forth. Uh, Twitter, we are at CJ underscore Speedway. Um, Instagram, we are at CJ Speedway. And, of course, like I said, I'm going up to the race this weekend. So hopefully either me or... Mr. C.J. Bassett can get Chris a uh, can get Chris a extra large uh, Guido T-shirt, and I believe they're like twenty four bucks up there. I don't know how much they are, but yeah. Look at it this way: as much as I'm slimming out, I've been an extra large T-shirt for the last nineteen years. No matter how much the beer belly goes down, extra large is still my favorite. I, I do like a little bit of room inside my uh, stuff. I'm not like Corey who wears form fitting Jones. And wants to show off the guns in the summertime. Oh, yeah. That's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, but other than that, um, I actually did some go-karting out in the Berkshires this weekend. I was out in Hadley and West Hatfield. A lot of fun this weekend. Um, I want to give a little bit of a special shout-out to my friend uh, Jason Mora, who, went, who ended up going uh, go-karting with me this weekend. So if you haven't watched this kid, um, he, he is also a racer himself. Um, I forget the type of racing that he does, but uh, it was actually kind of funny because the first time we went out racing, we went to the Autobahn indoor karting in Hadley, and I thought to myself, okay, this is going to be easy. I can beat these kids no problem, but I have to tell you guys, this kid beat me not only at the one in Hadley, but the one in Hatfield as well, and I had to tell you, like, you know, I was flat out wrong that I was going to beat those guys, and I got to tell you, I got to give that kid, Jason, some credit. I mean, he's a... You know, he knows his racing. He knows, like, you know, where the passing zones are and where the where the break and where to, where to accelerate coming off the corner. But, Jason, um, if you're watching this show, I want to say hi, and thank you so much for coming out racing this weekend. Um, I don't know when I'm going to be out in the Berkshires again, but I'm going to be out there real uh, – hopefully I'll be out there real soon. But other than that, um, I will be racing down at Foxwoods uh, next month. Uh, August 24th, so it should be very exciting, and I can't wait. But, uh, yeah, a lot of racing, a lot of fun racing out there, but the driving was just literally just like I, – I'd probably say, like, I wanted to make a big road trip out of it and stuff, but, uh, but no, coming back, it was a little bit brutal. I mean, I hit a little bit of traffic on the pike around Sturbridge, but other than that, it was – you know, it, it, made, it made ourselves a little fun day out of it. Of course you hit traffic in Sturbridge on the pike because that's what – happens yes when you're getting towards now here here's something for you folks in middle america western america where you're listening to us from maybe canada from my canadian nascar friends when you get on the mass pike there is a special place on the mass pike where everybody wants to pull their hair out and gouge their own eyes it's called <laughs> bill Rica. but if you read it on a sign it, it looks like bill erica right it's bill Rica. And if you go through Bill Ricca, not only does everybody slow down to see the shrubbery cut out as the, as the Friendly's logo, which is a restaurant chain down here in New England, they say, oh, look, it says Friendly's ice cream in bushes. And everybody slows down to a crawl and everything <laughs> comes to a bottleneck. But then it goes from three, four lanes to three lanes to two lanes in about half a mile. So everybody's fighting for position. It kind of looks like Bristol Night Race to be honest. So if you ever have the opportunity 
to drive through that section, drink heavily before you do so because you're going to need it. <laughs> yes. Hey, uh, real quick, if you have a calendar in front of you, uh, you said you're coming down August 24th to Foxwoods to do the yes. uh, the Monza track. What day does that fall on? Uh, Saturday. Okay. Let me see what I can do because I would love to get out there on the track with the rest of you goofballs and uh, show you that the old man still got it. Right, and hopefully, uh, hopefully that kid Jason comes as well. I'd love it. I'd love it. So now, for the most famous words, hopefully in another language, in CJ Speed Review history, I throw it to Corey Huffnagel. Good night. Oh Jesus! Have fun, everybody. <laughs> Enjoy New Hampshire. Yes.